How's it going friends? Reckless Yuki here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic and I do apologize that it's been over a week since my last upload but I've been pretty busy with school since school picked back up and also I finished my water cooling setup so that's what this video is basically about just showing this off to you guys and for the most part the water cooling build went smoothly it just took a lot longer than I anticipated mainly because I was adding in things that doesn't necessarily fit within this case. And if you're curious about the case, it's a Thermaltake Core P5. And I know a lot of people are going to kind of look negatively on the case and on my decision to use Thermaltake due to Thermaltake's kind of bad rep recently. But I figured this case was kind of different than the other cases that they, you know, quote unquote copied. But I also just kind of liked the looks of this case and it was pretty cheap for only being $130, $140 that I found it on Amazon really dirt cheap and I'm kind of really frugal when it comes to my PC cases. I don't really like spending a lot of money on them. If I could and if I you know, had the plenty of disposable income, I would get like a Lee and Lee case, but I don't really want to spend $500, $600 on a case so I settled with this Thermaltake and I think it looks pretty good if I don't say so myself and I like the fact that it kind of shows off all the water cooled components and all the components in here except for the fans are EK water blocks. Now the fans our thermal takes and it kind of really resemble closely to the design that Corsair made but I really like these because the ring lit up like I really wanted to get some LED lights in here and I don't really like the lights that where the whole light lights up I like what thermal take did with these lights so you can either hate them or not I kind of like the way that they did it and also I took off those stupid stickers on the fans themselves because I thought they looked pretty cheesy so I think they look pretty clean and overall this is my setup so everything like I said is EK water blocks and you know for the most part they're really nice like a really high quality company and I'm really happy with the way that everything turned out um, and the liquid in here is called Mayhem Aurora Silvers version 2 so not the version 1 but the version 2 so the little particles in here that basically swirl around are smaller and will be less likely to get hung up on my components and hopefully won't clog anything up and this is also going to kind of be like a test of my own to see how many months will this last now when i built this loop i kind of wanted to do like kind of set up a drain line and a fill line like a permanent drain line and a fill line but i read that if you do that the little particles in the fluid will kind of collect there and do due to not having any kind of system flow within a few weeks or a month it could just settle out and where there won't be any little fancy particles in the fluid anymore so I kind of had to give up the ease of draining the system and filling the system, but if I ever need to, it's not too bad to just basically break the point right here and I can easily do maintenance on the system, which I probably will in a year, as long as the system is still running perfectly. If not, then I have to do it even sooner, but I'll make a video to let you guys know my experience with it. But anyways, this is my water cooled setup and I have to say, I freaking love custom water cooling when it comes to PCs. Like, before I thought it was kind of overkill. I thought it was basically something that wasn't really needed. Now air cooling is just fine if you're not really overclocking or if you live in a cool environment. I live in basically a desert here in Arizona so it gets really hot in the summer and it's already starting to pick up as far as heat wise. So I want to make sure that I did this to kind of prep myself for the summer so my computer would, would overheat again. Like last summer was kind of hectic where I had to have the fans full speed which just were insanely loud because I picked the 3000 RPM fans from Noctua and it just sounded like a jet engine every time I was editing or playing games for a while in here. It was just almost unbearable. I didn't think it would be too loud, but after sitting here and enduring that for the past however many months or a year, I decided I really needed to change. So I decided to do this to kind of basically do as much heat dissipation as possible by adding in a bunch of radiators. And the rad here is a 480 by 60 millimeters thick. And then the two on the top and the bottom are 360s by 30 millimeters thick. So that's a plenty of space to dissipate heat. And when I was kind of testing out my system a week, about, a week ago before I finally tore everything apart and did this, uh, when I was playing the division for about 30 minutes to an hour, it definitely, the heat definitely came up with my all-in-one coolers. Like with the CPU, I think it was hitting the 60 degrees with a 4.5 gigahertz overclock. And then the two 980 Ti's that I have in here, which are the classified editions on my all-in-one cooler setup, they were hitting like the second card, the one below was hitting about maybe kind of mid 60s where the top card was hitting about low 70s 
And now with this full like blown out water cooling setup, my gra or my CPU was hitting only about like around 50 degrees. So that saved me about 10 degrees, which is nice and chilly and kind of keep things nice and cool. And then my graphics card, they were, you know, just hovering around 33 degrees. So that's where this setup really kind of came in and these, you know, all like these custom water blocks on the graphics card, like really kind of keeps them cool. And I'm really stoked about it that the heat levels was a great improvement. Actually, I think they got up to the 40s. My graphics cards got up to the 40s. And then I recently just overclocked them and I was able to get 1506 megahertz on these 980 Ti classifieds and it's rock solid and stable, something I wasn't able to get before. And I think that was mainly due to the heat. So I remember looking up uh, reviews of these uh, 980 Ti's and like Titan X's and was always told that the thermal limits or the physical limits of a card would never matter because the uh, physical limits would always hit before the thermal limits would. But I think it's mainly because those people live in well ventilated areas or they have really nice all like, I guess, air conditioning where my room is not very well air conditioned. I have this little portable thing here that keeps temperatures somewhat comfortable, but it's nowhere near as cool as I would like it to be. And so once I did this and got these cards wa like water cooled with these nice, awesome water blocks from EK Water Blocks, it is now able to have maintain a stable overclock and all the issues I had from like Black Ops 3, I'm not sure if something changed with how they did the programs, but I re-downloaded Precision X16 and I pumped up the overclock to the max overclock I could stable, which now is stable and I was able to play Black Ops 3 just fine. So I think the main issue with my overclocking of my graphics cards for the past year that I've been having them was all due to the fact that I wasn't able to keep them cool even though I had those all-in-one coolers, even though I had things to basically blow air onto the VRM chips, it didn't matter. And then the all, or the basically this whole water cooling, custom water cooling loop is the only way to actually adequately cool a PC, especially if you live in hot environments. So I am in full love with this. And also the main thing is the noise level. When I had the old setup with the really loud fans, the fans would kick up really loud and I could hear the fans, they're very audible. And even through like my closed back headphones, I could hear them. You could hear them from across the apartment when I'm rendering a video. Absolutely insane. With this setup, I was gaming for over an hour with everything overclocked and it just stayed whisper quiet. It just doesn't kick up any speed. These fans are 1500 RPM fans, but the most I saw them go up to was 900 RPMs. The uh, CPU pump just stays around, uh, or not the CPU pump, but the water cooling pump only goes up to about 2200 rpm so everything is really quiet and I, I just was amazed with how the performance i received and the benefits i received for living in this environment so anyways that's enough blabbering as far as me as far as my water cooling setup but this is it let me know what you guys think in the description below uh, i might this probably is a very unorthodox video i'm just kind of babbling and expressing my opinions to you guys my raw opinions and thoughts hopefully you enjoy that if not let me know this <laughs> ah as I just spit. Um, let me know in the description below and I'm going to stop the video before I make even more of a fool of myself. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.